I said before, kind of, kind of tongue in cheek. I'm laying down these tracks here. I'm trying to get myself into the machine to cheat death. That's really the only reason. I mean, again, tongue in cheek is to cheat death. You heard me say, or you will hear me say in other tracks. It's, I really don't care to be remembered by the world. Not really, no. I, I can say that safely, yes. It's just my way of allowing the man, which will one day die, allowing the man to live on in the machine. I'll use YouTube's platform, kind of like cryogenics, you know? Kind of like, only not. And then it has slowly started to occur to me as I've been doing this stupid stuff that <clears throat> I love to harp on it. It always comes down to pride or fear. And you could say pride is the motivator here. You know, ego to live forever. But I'm thinking it's really probably more on the, the fear side. I'm afraid I'm in line for it. So maybe really subconsciously that's why I started doing this. And only now is it, you know, coming to my own consciousness. I stopped hiding it from myself, okay, the truth. <laughs> There's this movie story, 2001, A Space Odyssey, where the computer becomes hostile towards the crew and begins to kill them off one by one, but fails to finish off the last human being. Comes pretty close. But the human being has managed to now work his way into the computer's inner sanctum, you know, where the servers are, where the wild things are. And the computer, Hal, Hal, of course knows Dave is in there, the man he's just trying to off. And the computer is noticeably concerned. <laughs> he queries him, what are you doing, Dave? And Dave doesn't say much. Doesn't have to. And the computer really didn't need an answer. And the computer begins to, to reason with Dave. You know, anything he can think of, you know, like, I almost want to say, you know, let's be fiends. Let's be friends, you know? That's John speak for friends. Fiends. You're allowed to call me your fiend. Anytime you want, and I will smile. Johnny's mother used to call me Stevie, and I'm like, oh, I like you, lady. You're nuts. And so Dave begins to pull out the brains. Hal's brains, the trays. One by one, he's pulling these trays out. And you listen to Hal begin to plead with Dave almost as Hal begins to regress into this more juvenile and then childlike state. until he ends up, the computer ends up singing a lullaby to Dave. And as Dave, I guess, pulls out the last pertinent cards, memory chip cards, whatever, the computer just goes silent. It's kind of how it went for my mom. 
with the Alzheimer's. Only with her, it was more like kind of like whack-a-mole or prairie dogs, I should say. You know, one pops up over here, goes back down. One pops up over here, let's say, goes back down. The memories. They began to come and go for her. Kind of like Dave the astronaut taking the tray out and then putting it back in just to be a dick. Just to be a dick. Say, only kidding, only kidding not, and then pulling it out again. Just to be a dick. Which I wouldn't have any problem with after this damn computer whacked like eight or nine human beings. I'm like, yeah, I ain't got a problem with that. Pull out everything. Pull out the plug, as Captain James T would say. Quick, quick side shot. Pull out the plug. But that's how Alzheimer's does. It takes a part of you away, and then sometimes it'll let, it'll 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 bring it back. But it's always one step forward, two steps back. It's always one step forward, two steps back. It's always one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. It's always one step forward and two steps back with Alzheimer's. <laughs>